Charles Darwin was the first to write about the evolution of modern vertebrate eyes, the complex camera-like eyes that humans, dogs, and even goldfish use. By comparing the different types of eyes found in diverse animal groups alive today, scientists have been able to piece together a surprisingly detailed sketch of how our eyes evolved. That said, there is one part of the eye, one structure, that up until now has not been well studied. The blinking eyelid. Goldfish do not have eyelids. Their eyes are never at risk of drying out. But you and I, we would quickly go blind without blinking. Human eyelids are extremely complex. Lots of muscles, special hair placements, and so on. With this in mind, how did our early fishy ancestors keep their eyes wet as they first ventured out onto land? Stated Clearly presents... Darwin's Missing Wink. How did eyelids first evolve? Vertebrates, animals with backbones, humans included, can be traced back to populations of fish that began venturing out onto land. Currently known fossils and trackways suggest that the earliest fish to experiment with life on land started doing so almost 400 million years ago. Sadly though, eyelids don't usually fossilize, meaning we can't depend on fossils alone to answer today's question. To get around this problem, biologists have recently set their sights on a very diverse group of modern fish, a group commonly known as gobies. There are over 2,000 goby species alive today. They used these fish to conduct comparative anatomy and comparative behavioral experiments. As you might expect, marine gobies live in the water, and they don't have eyelids. What you might not suspect is that gobies are extremely territorial. Case in point, these two right here are fighting over a garbage patch. That's how tough the struggle for existence is. It turns out that gobies are so territorial that some lineages have been pushed out into very shallow, very inhospitable waters, and a few species have been pushed way out onto land. Land gobies, more commonly known as mud skippers, can only spend several hours at a time out of water. They're still anatomically near the start of their evolutionary journey onto land. A journey similar to, but independent from, the evolution of our own ancient ancestors. By studying this current evolutionary transition, we might be able to find clues about how our ancestors made a similar journey. In a way, it's not totally surprising that gobies are the ones venturing out onto land these days. Even fully aquatic goby species already use their strengthened fins as little feet. They perch on the seafloor instead of swimming in the water column. But life out of water requires more than just strong fins. Mudskippers do not have lungs. In spite of this, they can stay out of water many hours at a time thanks to two main tricks. First off, they absorb some of their oxygen directly through their mucousy skin. This is nice, but several other species of fish can also do this. It's not that special. Second, when running extra low on oxygen, they gulp in air, often with a little bit of water, which is held in their mouth and throat pouch. The inside of this pouch is lined with blood vessels and contains their gills. This entire structure together acts a bit like a makeshift lung. So there you have it. Mudskippers can sort of walk. They can sort of breathe. But what happens if a mudskipper gets dust in its eyes? A little bit of sand or grit. In a new paper titled The Origin of Blinking in Both Mudskippers and Tetrapods is Linked to Life on Land, Researchers report that mudskippers, while they may not have true eyelids, do have what you might call a proto-eyelid. When the eye is too dry or otherwise irritated, they tug the eye back into their skull. Folds in the skin around the eyes automatically bunch up over the retracted eye, wetting it and wiping it clean in the process. Here, the paper shows us a skull and muscle comparison between a mudskipper and one of its marine goby cousins. Mudskippers have not evolved any new eye muscles for blinking. Not in the skin around the eye, the proto-eyelid, or anywhere around the eye itself. Instead, their eyes just stick out further. And because of this, the normal eye muscles that all gobies possess are slightly stretched and rearranged, which allows that tugging motion. Isn't that amazing? Just such a cool, simple solution. I find these critters so fascinating that I made a sticker about them. I hope you like it. There is a link to that sticker down in the video description. As generations continue, the gradual process of evolution might slowly add extra bells and whistles to these proto-eyelids, but 
these are a good enough start for now. Knowing this about mudskipper eyes, we can now look again at those fossils we saw earlier and ask a well-informed question. Could it be that those ancient animals blinked like mudskippers blink? While it is hard to say for sure, their skull structures certainly allow for it. Furthermore, modern amphibians still partly use this simple, ancient blinking method. It's been greatly enhanced by additional eye-protecting structures, but Darwin's missing wink, it seems, has finally been found. Before I go, I hope you don't judge me too much for reminding you that this new sticker is available, but also, comic artist Jordan Culver recently did a comic about this research. Jordan, by the way, is the one who came up with the missing wink joke. I stole it with permission from one of his tweets. Love it or hate it, now would be a good time to pause the video and tell him how you feel about it down in the comment section. Commenting, I'm told, is also great for the YouTube algorithm, so anyway. The research paper itself is also an excellent read, and if you're new to reading scientific papers, I recommend this as a good starting place. They do use a fair amount of physiology jargon, but so long as you're careful to look up any words you don't understand, this is very readable for anyone. Links to all of these goodies can be found down in the video description.